Hey everyone, I'm back, finally. I feel like it's been so, so long. We have a little addition to the family. This is little Indy Rose. She's just um, been fed, so she's a little bit like milk drunk and sleepy. Hi, you look scared. Say hi to everyone. So she's three weeks, three days old today. Um, and she's changed so much just from one week, it's crazy. I just have really wanted to do this video because when I was pregnant I found these videos so interesting and like hopefully they'll be interesting even if you're not pregnant. Anyway, just to kind of know what my labour was like because it's just, I had no idea what to expect and yeah, so I thought this would be a fun video to do. Hello. So I'm gonna give her back to Jason because he can look after her just while I film this video and like do my big chatty bit. I don't know whether to talk about her now or like at the end of this um, at the end of this video but she was born seven pounds two ounces and healthy healthy and happy um, and anyway I'm gonna give her back now so that she can um, rest a little bit let's give you back oh it feels so nice to be back filming it feels weird like I'm chatting to like the camera is my friend <laughs> but it feels really nice to be chatting again first of all I want to say a massive massive thank you to all of your amazing comments and messages like on Instagram snapchat everywhere YouTube um, it's so like the I don't know the support and the love from everyone was amazing so thank you all so much for being so lovely I've obviously had a few pre-recorded videos up because I knew that after the birth everything would be really manic and I didn't want to have a really long stretch without any videos um, and I was right it's been so manic like even filming this video has taken so much planning oh first off as well I I put my video up of just before or actually I was my label was kind of starting, so I'll link that in, where should I link it? Around, I'll link that around here. Also, Jason filmed a whole uh, like labor, no, a birth video. Like, there's clips of throughout my pregnancy and the labor and then after, you know, like a little bit of the birth. So I'll link that video here as well. Loads of you have already watched it and the feedback from it has been amazing. And it's just, the way he's done it is so beautiful. So when I was pregnant, um, I was planning to have a water birth. I was reading up a lot about hypnobirthing. Um, and that's kind of the way that I wanted to go, but I was keeping a really open mind um, in, because I knew like it might not go to plan. So I had her on the 21st of December um, at 12.20 p.m. My labor started on the 20th at about 6 a.m. I remember waking up, oh, the day before that I'd had a sweep. I just had my sweep. She was saying it's kind of like favorable for me to, for my body to go into labor soon, basically, which is good. Now we're just gonna wait and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I felt what felt like I thought were contractions at 6 a.m. because I, I'd been looking out for like waves of pain um, and for them to be consistent. I was feeling that they were coming at like around every 15 minutes or so. So at first it just feels like period pain, but like, you know, and it just gradually kind of got worse and worse during the day. How are you feeling? Tired. I've had contractions since. 6 a.m. I've been doing, I've been timing them. I knew that during my labor, I wanted to stay as calm as I could and to kind of stay feeling in control of it, in control of the pain to a certain extent and to just breathe through through the contractions. So that's what I was doing for most of the day. So I was editing a video during my labor that day. I was doing bits of housework and just bits and bobs like around the house because I knew that it was good to stay distracted. But when it got to about 6 p.m., I'd say, um, it was getting to the point where it was getting harder to do anything else during the contractions and that's when I had to start to kind of stop and like just stand and I just like stand holding something and then just breathe through it through it six till midnight that's when they started getting really bad so I wasn't vlogging anymore and it's funny because I went from kind of standing at like a cabinet or something to breathe through the contractions to like gradually having to get down on my knees at the bed, grabbing the bed, <laughs> like breathing through the contraction. There's just no pain like it. Like it, I've never felt pain like that. It was so, it is brutal. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how else to explain it. It was brutal. Coming through the whole labor as well made me, so, I just, I'm astounded by what women do like that the pain Jason ran a bath for me as well because I knew as well that the warm water would help with the pain 
Uh, didn't help. For some reason, <laughs> when I was in the bath, it actually felt worse. I don't know why, which is really weird. And I got worried because obviously I wanted a water birth. So I was like, I hope I'm not gonna hate that when I go to the hospital. I was in the bath for, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes. I feel like it wasn't that long. And then I was like, no, it's not helping. <laughs> then I got out of the bath and then like went back into the bedroom. And that was where I kind of played out the last bit of my labor at home. Obviously, they don't want you to go to the hospital too early because they'll send you back home. So I was really worried about that. But I got to a point where I was just like, I want to go to the hospital. <laughs> I was like, I want to go. I don't care. I just want to be at the hospital. Um, I think they want you to be four centimeters dilated. And obviously we didn't know how dilated I was because we couldn't check at home. So we got in the car, drove to the hospital. It's so the hospital I went to at St. Mary's and they were, it was amazing. I have to say first off, everyone, all the midwives there are amazing. I felt like giving them all a care package afterwards. Uh, apart from one actually, she was weird. But in, in case you guys don't know, like there's a normal labor, labor ward for kind of every, kind of like if you're planning a normal sort of birth. But if you want a water birth, if you want to try and go a bit more natural, then there was the birthing center where there's all the baths. I think the only, the only medication they give you is gas and air. The first midwife that we saw was like, yeah, I don't think you're in established labor yet. Me. And I was like, okay, like what can I do? He checked me and I was, I think I was one to two centimeters dilated, so not a lot at all, but the pain, because I wasn't at the stage yet to go into the pool, into the bath. So they were like, right, you can go into, um, we can just put you into a room and you can't go in the bath yet, but you can just be in labor in that room for however long it takes to get to four centimeters dilated. So I was like, yes, <laughs> that's fine, put us in the room. Like I just wanted to be in the hospital. So I was in labor in that room without being in the pool for quite a few hours, had the loveliest midwife, she was really, really good. For ages, being on all fours was good and it kind of helped with the pain. And then I just got to a stage where nothing was help, no position was helping with the pain. It was just the worst. <laughs> I was getting a bit frustrated because I just wasn't still at four centimeters and I really wanted to go into the pool. Um, so after a little while, we were just, we asked them, we were like, look, can you check up? Like, I was like, can you check me soon? Because I want to know how dilated I am. About an hour later, she came, checked me, and I think I was about like three, three and a half or something like that. And I was like, oh, thank God, like, I'm kind of close. Um, pain carried on, they wouldn't let me in the pool still for a little while. And then I remember her saying something like, right, we're looking for her, for the contractions to kind of be on top of each other. I think, I might be wrong. And I remember her saying something about throwing up, like when she's at the stage where she's like throwing up and basically can't take it anymore. That's when we run the bath. I hadn't slept, I hadn't eaten anything for hours. So Jason went out and got some food and a hot chocolate. And I had a few sips of hot chocolate in between contractions and about 10 to 20 minutes later, I just remember going, I feel sick. <laughs> I had to run to the toilet and I just, yeah, everything exploded. Let's just say everything exploded. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and at that point, the midwife was like, right, bath. Being in the nice warm water helped. It didn't get rid of the pain at all. It was still really, really painful. <laughs> That's my experience. The midwife was at the side, Jason was at the side, like feeding me energy drink because she told him to go and get Lucas Aid, the flat one. Um, and then she was at the other side, kind of ready to go with the gas and air. So I went through about two more contractions, asked for the gas and air. It helped so much, I can't explain. It's, it's like a nice dizzy. It wasn't like, a horrible dizzy, it's just a nice like unawareness for a, a few minutes. Um, so you just breathe it in, so you just breathe it in through when you feel the contraction coming on and then stop when you feel it ebbing off. Yeah, I loved it, I loved it. I have to say, I don't know how women do it to totally natural. <laughs> I have so much to respect for women that go 100% natural. Then we got to pushing stage and I'd read about this stage before. I'd read that before you go, just before you go into pushing stage, there's a transition stage it's called and it's when a lot of women just, <laughs> they start to be like, nope, I'm done. Like, I wanna go home, I can't do this anymore. Or they turn into, they turn really angry. And that, I, I don't think I turned angry or anything, which I'm really glad about. Um, the only thing I remember, like what changed in me is that she, I was told to like keep breathing and I think she told, she like was letting me know that pushing is coming soon. And I just remember shaking my head and I was like, no. <laughs> I remember thinking, no, I just can't do it. But that only lasted a few seconds and then um, it kind of went, then I could feel her coming down. For me, it went really quickly from, um, 
active labour to pushing. And I just really tried to listen to my body. The whole way I think I was just really trying to respond to what my body wanted me to do. Pushing stage was really like an amazing feeling thinking back. Obviously it was really horrible at the time, but it's an amazing feeling when you can feel, um, like I could feel that she was coming down coming down the birth canal. I just knew when to push, it was really weird. Like when, when I've watched films and watched TV shows and things and the, the midwives are telling them when to push, I thought it would be like that. But I just could feel when I needed to push and it was really, it's really empowering feeling it. I just pushed like I'd never pushed before. <laughs> like everything in me, I was just like Grr. <laughs> And the, the bit in Jason's video where I'm moaning and everything. <laughs> That was, that was, I think, just before the pushing stage. That was around the most intense pain part of the labor. Halfway through my pushing phase, she took the gasnera away. And I remember being like, no, why are you taking it away? Um, but I just must not have needed it at that point. I don't, I don't even know. Kind of did the last bit without any gasnera or anything. And I remember her say, she said that some babies like to come in the water and some don't like coming out in the water. And she said, she was like, right, baby's not, doesn't want to come out in the water. So I had to get out of the water, go and just go on all fours on like this kind of couch thing that they had in there. That's where I finished off pushing. So I'd say in about five more pushes, um, that's when it all ended. I remember the ring of fire part. I remember thinking like, oh, this is the ring of fire part. It's basically, I think it's like when the baby's crowning, when the head's coming out. I, I feel like the contractions were worse than when she was coming out pain wise, because you're so close to the end as well. All you want to do is push and it's all over and then you're gonna have your baby. So for me, the pushing part was more empowering and like the contractions were worse. There were a few pushes where it was her head and I was so aware of it as well, what was coming, what was happening <laughs> at what point. And then was just her body and I think about two pushes or so, I'm not, I can't remember now. Um, and then she was out and I just, <laughs> it was the most amazing thing. I remember hearing a splutter when she came out, or I think her head was out, and apparently she spluttered. <laughs> she like spat in the midwife's face and like spluttered. I just remember seeing her like kind of drop out and um, Jason was up by my head. So he just saw her like fall out of me. <laughs> and he said it was just crazy, it was mental to see. It was like really surreal. They put her on me straight away. So she kind of latched on to my boob as well. Then she was just in my arms. <laughs> It sounds so cheesy and everything, but it was just the most amazing, surreal, magical, breathtaking moment of my life. Just seeing her face, because you're picturing what your baby's gonna look like for nine months, and to just finally see them, see their little body, it's just amazing. Like, holding her, it's so emotional. Um, and I just kept looking at Jason, and we were all just like looking at each other like, what? <laughs> I didn't poo on her head, which is a plus, because I'd heard so many times about like people pooing on their babies. A lot of the time you can poo on them, but I didn't, which is great. <laughs> yeah, the rest is history really. And I just felt really protective over taking those pictures, like posting her on social media for days and days, because I was just, I felt like I wanted her to be ours first. Like it's, I just don't want to like brandish her face everywhere. It's, oh, it's so weird. Like she doesn't have a choice. So it's like a, it's a weird thing, but a few days after I was like, I'm never gonna forget that pain. Cause I know, you know, everyone says that your women just forget the pain. I've already forgotten how bad the pain was. It's faint in my mind, but I'd already do it again. And I'd already be pregnant again. It's so weird. Cause I didn't like being pregnant. It's been such a crazy few weeks. I'm gonna go now. Cause I feel like I'm just blabbing on. And if I've forgotten anything, I'll put it in the video. I'll put it in the description box. Good luck to any other mums out there who are pregnant and who are like their birth is approaching. Don't be scared. Like, I feel like you know what, like you know what to do. When it happens, you'll know if you want more medication, if you want to be in water, if you don't want to be in water. But if you guys want to see more, any like pictures and things of Indy, then follow my Instagram. And also I snap her <laughs> quite a bit. That's that. Let me know what you guys would like to see. I'm so happy to be back doing fashion videos. I've, well, I've waited so long. 
Um, let me know if you want to see any specific fashion videos because I'll be so happy to do them. Oh, we have a new piece. I know this is off topic, but we have a new piece just about ready to be released um, from November night as well. So I'll be doing a video on that as well soon. My camera cut me off, but if you guys wondered, my jumper is from Gestus. I always, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but um, I'll link it down below. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for bearing with me. It's so nice to be back filming. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Mwah. Thank you.